What am I doing with my life? I'm stuck at a job that I don't like, living paycheck to paycheck because I don't earn enough, and every new day feels worse than the day before. And what does my job accomplish anyway? It's not like I'm going to end world hunger or find a cure for cancer. I don't think I'm even appreciated at my workplace. I can leave and find a new job, but what's the guarantee that I'll be happy there? To hell with everything. Why do I need to work anyway? If we're all going to be dead someday and our names forgotten, then what has this all been for? If you've ever asked yourself those questions or felt something similar, know that you're not alone. The work that we do for a living takes up a significant portion of our life, so it's normal for us to question its meaning and ponder over the impact it has on the world. As a society, by and large, we also base our identities around our profession and sometimes even go as far as judging our self-worth based on the type of work we do and how good we do it. We're also expected to take pride in our work and not settle for mediocrity. Just as a doctor could feel pride over their ability to cure patients, a person in the army could feel the same way for doing his patriotic duties. If we look at history, we'll find unending examples of successful figures who took great pride in their profession and thus changed the world for the better. It's as if we have every evidence to believe that job satisfaction and happiness go hand in hand. And what if we could somehow land the job we're meant to do? All would be right with our lives. So, what's stopping us from chasing our dreams? Why do you see so many people stuck in dead-end careers, just going about their days mindlessly like zombies? The answer to this question is something you might not like to hear. Contrary to popular belief, not everyone sticks around doing a job they don't like because they have bills to pay and debts to clear. The truth is, the world is far more full of misfits than you think. A doctor who realised that she would rather be a stay-at-home parent, a soldier who would instead go back home, or an engineer who feels incompetent compared to his peers and would rather be in a different profession. According to Gallup's 2013 State of the American Workplace report, it was found that only 30% of the US workforce were actively engaged, while 52% were not engaged and 18% were actively disengaged. While such high levels of disengagement in the workplace do have a significant impact on the economy as a whole, the bigger question that deserves to be raised is why do people feel disengaged? If the answer in your mind is something like because they would rather do something else, you would be wrong. That's because, apart from people who feel like they'd rather do something else, there are those who don't know where they belong, unsure about their place in the world, their likes, dislikes, and what, or if anything at all, would instill a sense of purpose in them. As bleak as that thought may sound, it's more common than you imagine. The concept of finding fulfilment in work is a relatively modern construct. In the pre-industrialised world, only a handful of trades existed, and people mostly took up after their father. Now, with career opportunities spanning into thousands, we suddenly find ourselves struggling to identify where we'd fit in. And with the world constantly rushing us to grow up, we're finding ourselves taking up jobs earlier and working well beyond retirement years just to stay alive. Ask around and you learn that dissatisfaction and unhappiness are at the core of our being. Even someone who seems like they have got their life all sorted out has something to complain about. The reason being that evolution has not equipped humankind, as proud and accomplished as we are, to be happy, but to simply survive and reproduce just like every other organism on this planet. Our ancient ancestors fought off various predators, endured hunger, famine, death, diseases, and lived every day knowing it could be their last. Their brains couldn't afford to remain in a state of blissful contentment because that would have lowered their guards against possible threats. The presence of a prominent frontal lobe in our brain further solidifies the theory that we're intrinsically better at executive and analytical roles than finding happiness, peace or even contentment. Even though the self-help and motivation industry is worth billions of dollars, it has failed to identify the root cause of unhappiness and clings on to the fantasy that everybody can be happy if they just did this or change that in their routine. And if we look towards our profession to make us feel happy, we could be setting ourselves up for a lifetime of misery. While there's nothing wrong with seeking help or pursuing our own path of happiness, we must acknowledge the fact that happiness is momentary and always fleeting. 
We all crave appreciation, enjoyment and satisfaction from our workplace. Some also want to leave behind a legacy. And when those things do not happen, we get stressed, depressed and start questioning the meaning of our existence, forgetting all the good things we already have. Today, finding a job we somewhat enjoy and pays us to fulfill some of our materialistic desires is not enough. We must earn much more than what we need, not only to satisfy ourselves, but also to impress others. So what do you do if you feel unfulfilled at work? Sit down, reflect, and look for different opportunities. Sure, but if you don't want to, make peace with the idea that your profession is a tiny part of who you are and is simply a means to an end. It's okay to not be as ambitious as your peers, live in the biggest apartment, drive an expensive car, or wear fancy jewelry. It's okay to not chase promotions or accolades at the cost of your mental health. In the end, your work doesn't matter because one day we'll all be dead, our names will be forgotten, and the vast and different universe will go on as it is today. And there's peace in knowing that. Hey there, if you're still watching this video, then we'd like to thank you from the core of our heart for sticking around. With a lot of effort and consistency, we've recently crossed 1,000 subscribers. None of this would have happened without your love and support. We hope you found meaningful life advice in our videos, or at the very least, some entertainment to break the monotony of life. We wish you good health and invite you on our journey to 100,000 subscribers.